Well, it's 12.01, so I think it's ready to get this going. So welcome, everybody. This is the Lunch and Learn for March 2023. I'll be your host again, Ted Brown, Director of Product Management here at Intiva. And today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Uh, I do get the question a lot, hey, what's the best spam solution out there? I do think people tend to overlook what is included in Microsoft 365 Defender, especially if you can add it in as an add-on or what's included in Microsoft Business Premium SKUs. So I want to make sure that we kind of educate you on how Microsoft Defender is different from other spam solutions out there and other capabilities that some don't actually have in there today. So we're going to be covering the overview for Microsoft Defender for Office 365, getting into some different licensing types where you can utilize this solution. Also go into a little bit more of the security layers so you kind of know the inside and outsides of the Office 365 protection layers. Do a little bit of an admin demo and an end user demo. Um, so there's really not too much to utilize on the end user side of it, besides, of course, getting a quarantine and junk mailing some stuff. So I'll show you how to do that. But this is going to be a little bit more PowerPoint driven than my previous Lunch and Learns. Uh, but we'll go ahead and make sure that you can cover all the information you need for what you need to do when utilizing Microsoft Defender today. Like other webinars and lunch and learns we have done, please use the Q&A section for any and all questions, and I'll answer any of the questions at the end of this presentation. Also, if you have any uh, ideas for future um, learning opportunities you want to do within the Microsoft suite, please let me know and pop them into the questions. I'm happy to take recommendations of different information you want to learn about. We do already have our Q2 lunch and learns planned out. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, how-to tricks with OneNote coming up in April, SAS alerts in uh, in May, and then looking in June doing, hey, why do you utilize a Microsoft 365 um, expert to come in and take a look at what you're utilizing those solutions for? So those will be coming up in Q2, but we're still finalizing our Q3 and Q4. So any ideas, please send us our way. We'll definitely consider them. Okay, so Microsoft 365, I want to go through a little bit of the flow and the highlights of what's included in this solution. So I also wanted to make sure you understand how the flow of spam occurs through the system or email occurs through the system. So I have been uh, in the MSP space for over 20 years now. So I've utilized a lot of different anti-spam solutions. Um, really in the early 2000s, we start using uh, this Google Postini, um, which is a SMTP gateway where email flowed through and then to the people's mailboxes. Usually after that, it migrated to a McAfee solution. And then we go into like a, a Mindcast, Proofpoint, a lot of different other solutions out there. And those are all solutions that are third-party type solutions that are going to sit in here, which I call as an SMTP gateway type solution. So when an email is sent from an external party, sent to your mailbox, it'll go through the internet and then first hit what was previously an SMTP gateway and then get to your email system. This was for me very important previously. Uh, main reason why, of course, you had the anti-spam collection happening all in there, but not too, too long ago, people weren't on Office 365. You didn't have your email being hosted in the cloud. The email system was typically at an office. And for small businesses, this office could have been just only on one internet connection coming in to that office building, had one firewall. So if the internet connection got severed, the firewall had an error and fell over, or the exchange server crashed, all email would now start stop coming in, potentially being sent back to the deliver, which would not be good for business. If someone's client is trying to email you and it bounces back, it doesn't look that great. So what these external solutions would do, would basically do what's called email spooling or mail bagging. It'll collect the mail to make sure that next time your mailbox, your exchange server comes back up online, it will then shoot all those messages back to you. So it's definitely a nice benefit of going to a third party email spam gateway, SMTP gateway. Now, with the evolution of Microsoft 365, that is not as important today. There's multiple different entries into the 365 ecosystem. So you're not really relying on that one internet connection coming into your office. So they have multiple SMTP gateways also collecting messages. So you're not worried about one server crashing. So the redundancy and the resiliency built into 365 kind of really takes out the need to have that external system collect your mail in case Microsoft 365 goes down. So when that gets taken out of place, now you're just kind of taking a look at the bare bones of, hey, what is the best email solution out there protecting the spam capabilities because you don't have to worry about protecting the inbound collection of every mail if something goes wrong with your exchange server. So now when things pass through the from external sender to your mailbox, it follows this flow. So it's going to follow from one, the person sending it to then going to the exchange online protection. Now, this is the basic included anti-spam that's included in all 
um, solutions that have a mailbox within Microsoft 365. I do not recommend using this alone without Microsoft Defender 365. Um, if you want to not use Office Defender for 365, I recommend using another anti-spam solution and not reliant only on the Exchange Online uh, protection. This does, I would say, is more of the bare bones, just the kind of continual protection of email coming through without the advanced techniques that are out there today that is necessary to make sure you protect your businesses with sophisticated attacks that are occurring in the wild all the time these days. So, you know, as the uh, criminals get more uh, educated on different ways to get into your system, we need to make sure we have more advanced threat protection in there. And that comes with your exchange, with your Microsoft Defender office. So once it goes through your exchange online protection, which will cover your, you know, anti-malware, your policy protections, your anti-spam solutions, your um, anti-spoofing, it will get into the advanced solutions of Microsoft Defender, which will pop in here, which is your anti-phishing your user imperson uh, impersonation protection, domain impersonation protection, safe links, as well as safe attachments, making sure that anything you're clicking on is always checked at that moment in time that you're clicking on it. And that's the best and more important. I'll get into that a little bit later in this, in this presentation. So one thing that for me, that's why I like Microsoft Defender for 365 is because the way people are communicating, collaborating is becoming easier. You know, companies have the ability to actually connect team channels together. So you can actually utilize teams connecting to another company and actually chat right through teams. So the way emails of way collaboration is happening is no longer coming through email. That means the threat landscape has expanded for multiple different avenues where people can take advantage of end users has some links, not through email, but through other systems that people are collaborating on, such as Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint, that might have malicious content behind it. And if you're only reliant on a anti-spam solution, checking your email coming through, those things will get missed. And that's why I think some of these anti-spam solutions out there are only covering one aspect of the security componentries you need to have at your workplace, which will now all be covered by Microsoft Defender for 365. So there's different licensing types we have with Microsoft Defender for Office 365. You have what I mentioned before, your free one, which is your Exchange Online Protection, which is included in all license types, your Exchange Online Plan 1, your Exchange Online Plan 2, you know, Microsoft uh, Business Basic, Business Standard, you got the gist, it's included in all of them. But if you want to upgrade to using, utilizing the Defender for Office 365, the plan one is the op, you know, great way to go. This is a $2 um, a month per user plan for you to have the full, uh, full capability of protecting your exchange, as well as SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams. This will cover things such as safe attachments, safe links, safe attachments for SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams, your impersonation protection, and real-time detections. You could upgrade to a plan two. Um, this does uh, um, have more robust features like threat tracking, threat explorer, automate investigating response, as well as attack simulation and training campaign views, more like phishing training and such like that. Now, this is a $5 a month charge. There are other solutions out there, I feel, that are slightly cheaper than that $5 charge that can be utilized with the online with the Defender for Office 365 Plan 1. So going to Plan 2, I wouldn't say is 100% necessary, but definitely looking at this for Office uh, 365 Defender, Plan 1 is a nice sweet spot especially if you're utilizing Microsoft um, Business Premium. Microsoft Business Premium does include the P1s. You don't have to pay the extra $2. And I've said this in other webinars and Lunch and Learns. It's best to take a look at all the SKUs and all the componentries of the licenses that you have today. So if this is already included, why not utilize it? It's going to be provide you a more robust security system, and you don't have to pay anything extra for your employees and staff. This is also included in Office 365 E5 and Microsoft 365 E5. Those both contain P2 as well. So you don't have to pay anything extra if you're utilizing those license types. So the Microsoft Defender for Office 365 protection stack has multiple layers of security protection to all incoming messages. Uh, now, the stack comprises of four component trees. You have the edge protection the sender intelligence, the content filtering, the post delivery protection. Now, each of these layers are checking for different types of threats coming through. And typically messages will traverse all the, each of these layers in kind of that order. But depending on how you set up the actual routes and policies, it might skip one and kind of go back to another. So it depends on how it's set up. But for the most part, it will follow straight from edge protection, sender layer, content filtering, and post delivery. So I want to kind of get into a little bit of these nuances so you kind of understand how things are being checked along the way. 
So edge layer, this is really the first layer coming through. So you have that the diagram I had where you have the external email sending uh, hits the uh, hits the internet and then hits 365. So this is going to be your edge layer. Now this edge layer is taking a look at hey, where is this message originating from? It's going to take a look at like the IP reputation and throttling. So maybe this is coming from a known bad IP address that Microsoft will take a collection of. And also as administrators, we can add IP addresses in there that might be malicious that we've seen coming through. So if it's coming from that, we'll block it immediately. And also take a look at domain reputation. Hey, is this being sent from a known bad domain system out there that has been sending spam all along? Microsoft will keep this up to date for us. If it matches that, it will block that message coming through. It will do backscatter detection. Again, that's in most of the anti-spam solutions today. But the one I like here is at the bottom of it is the enhanced filtering for connectors. This is going to do with like a skip listing. So this could be a bad actor sending a message from a known bad location through another system that could be perfectly fine. And then to the client, this will actually take a look at the full history of the chain of where this is coming from and see that originating state and know it's coming from a bad IP address and block it right there. So now once it gets through the edge layer, it's going to take a look like, okay, hey, it looked good on the uh, where the IP was coming from. Let's go ahead and take a look at who is sending this message and get into the sender intelligence layer. Again, I'm not going to cover all these high-level bullet points, but there's a couple in here that I wanted to talk about. It'll take a look at email authentication. It'll get into in here going through what's DKIM and DMARC. Uh, so the DKIM stands for your domain key identified mail, and that's used for the authentication of an email that's being sent Similar with the DMARC, it's the domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Again, checking to make sure that the authenticity of the person sending it is valid, and it'll go through a whole bunch of checks in that. It'll also do spoof intelligence checking to make sure that no one's trying to spoof the user, spoof the, um, spoof the domain, making it look like it might be a similar type of domain. This next one here, I think, is very important and sometimes not capable with another anti-spam solution. It's called the intra-org spoof intelligence. So this has a capability since it's already the defender is in the solution itself to actually going through and taking a look at emails being sent to staff. Now, if I go back to our previous graph here of how email flows, if you have an SMTP gateway, it will take the email coming through, send it to your mailbox, and then next thing you know, it's in here into your email settings. So people inside the organization, it might not be checking it if it's not able to be configured that. So anything being sent to each other is just deemed, hey, this must be good because Sam knows uh, Joanna, Janet knows Sam, must know what word is about checking it. These days, you want to make sure to check every message, no matter where it's coming from. And the Microsoft 365 Defender Suite will take care of that for you by taking a look at cross-domain uh, spoof intelligence. It will get into similar things called bulk filtering, which most anti-spam solutions do today, but it will also do mailbox intelligence. So it will take a look at the typical types of behaviors the end user is utilizing to see if it has a history of getting messages from that person or not and make decisions based on those factors to deem it a spam or maybe a valid validated email. It will do mailbox intelligence as well for impersonation protection, user impersonation, and domain impersonation. Now, these things are very common right now in the, uh, in the wild where people are purchasing domains that are similar to yours. For instance, someone might uh, buy an antiva.com, but instead of the T, maybe make it an L, so an Tilva or something like that, and put ted.brown at antilva.com and send it out to a whole bunch of people at Antiva. They recognize the TED, they recognize the Brown, it looks like Antiva, and people are working all the time on multiple different things continuously. One slip up, that person clicked that message, and the next day you know a malicious content's been deployed, potential crypto locker, and boom, it takes down your whole network because someone spoofed your message, uh, had an impersonation of the domain itself. So this is, we'll take a look at that to make sure to block those messages so your end users don't have to take a fine look at everything. So now once we validate, hey, where it's coming from, the center looks great. Okay, let's take a look at the content that's included in this email. Take a look at the embedded messages that are included in the actual email itself. Take a look at your links going on. Let's go ahead and take a look at your attachments that are coming through there. So take a look at all the functionality behind the scenes included in the email itself. Now, this is where the Microsoft Defender antivirus will come into place. So this is really going to be now, hey, the, the had an Excel document come through. Okay, let's bring that Excel document and put it into what's called a sandbox. It will go to uh, launch that uh, link itself, make sure no malicious content's happening in, behind the scenes before it's actually sent to the user itself. 
verify and make sure that, hey, when the person receives that, they can click on it with uh, without any fear that there's something running behind the scenes. It also does stuff called URL reputation blocking. So it's taking a look at all the links that are coming through to you and making sure that the links behind it don't launch anything malicious. Um, and the one thing I like about this as well, it has URL detonation and link content detonation here at the bottom. And what I mean by this is actually taking a look continuously about what's going on with that link, not a one-time snapshot. So it's constantly taking a look at what's going on and sandboxing those solutions. So when you actually click on it, no matter what it is, you make sure that you have the correct link and it's nothing behind the scenes going to launch it to your computer. It gets a little bit into, okay, the post delivery system. So, hey, great. It passed through. Hey, got sent from their, their correct uh, locations. Everything looks good on the IP address. The sender uh, was authenticated. Everything was great there. Everything looked great in the content. Now it's sent to the end user and off you go. Microsoft 365 doesn't stop there. Now with Microsoft 365, it has a little bit what's talking about before is called the safe links. So uh, imagine this, someone creates a, a bad actor, creates a URL that is a valid URL, nothing behind the scenes, sends it to you. Now, when they send it to you, it'll pass through all those anti-spam checks and put along those lines and nothing checks on it because the website's perfectly fine. And now it gets to your mailbox. Now what the bad actor can do, he can arm that uh, URL. So 15 minutes later, after it went through your whole system, now he arms it. So when anyone clicks on it, it's now a malicious content being sent to you. It never got checked. It never got flagged beforehand because when the system checked at the beginning, it was perfectly fine. But what this does is with the safe links, no matter when you click on that message, it's always validating that is a safe link to click. 15 minutes later, 30 minutes later, 30 days later, it's always checking that. It also does that, which for me is one of the most important things, is with all the different Office products within the 365 suite. So it's going to be doing that for your Excel, your PowerPoint, your Outlook, um, your Word. And it's going to do it with things that are included in your OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams. Like I mentioned before, uh, people have the ability to collaborate really easy with each other through different communication channels and email. So we got to make sure that those things are protected and constantly protected for when things get armed or detonated because people, so actors are being smart about how things flow through. So you want to make sure that you're protected 100% of the time, all the time. And that's where I feel that Microsoft 365 Defender does a great job at that. The other piece in here, which I really like, is the ZAP, which is called the Zero Hour Purge. So this can um, do a great job of actually flagging emails that are malicious after the fact and then purge them right out of your mailbox. A lot of anti-spam solutions today can't quite go into the mailbox level. Some are able to nowadays, but a lot of the base ones cannot. Or now, since it has direct access to your mailbox, it'll say, hey, that email message from Ted Brown and Tilva is, is not a good email message and pull it right out of your mailbox. So now it's removed there and you don't have to worry about your end users selecting and clicking on it. So very robust system has a capability going through all the checks from it sending from the uh, from when it actually hits the edge, take a look at make sure the sender's correct, making sure the contents to correct, and then always making sure once it's delivered to you that everything's still valid when you click on it at that moment in time. So now that I kind of go through this, let me go ahead and go through a little bit of the admin demo. I can kind of show you some of the selections you can choose and then show you the user demo real quick. So let me bring up my system. All right. So here I am, I'm in the admin portal of my demo site, I have admin at tomorrow's firm today. So I click on the admin section here and then jump into security. I'm going to wait for that to load, which is going to be security right here. And then once I pop that up, I'm going to get to the security component trees of Microsoft 365. Now, there's going to be many things in here I can configure, and I'm pretty sure at some time in the near future, I'll get into Endpoint, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. But today, we're just going to take a look at the email and collaborations. Now, with the email collaborations, we're going to take a look at the policies and rules. So this is where you set all the policies for an organization. I'm going to take a look at threat policies. Now, Microsoft does a good job of actually doing some preset security rules for organizations where you can actually say, hey, I want to have, oh, of course, it doesn't, an error there. Back up. There we go. Um, you can have the built-in protection, which is going to be your Exchange Online protection. Then you have your standard protection, which, is, again, this is all included now in the Microsoft 365 um, Defender for um, 365. You have the standard protection and a strict protection. Now, I'm a little bit more security um, leaning more on the more stricter rules. So I probably would go more, hey, let's go ahead and put everyone to the stricter protection. 
this does have a, a probability of actually flagging things that might not be flagged. So things might end up in the junk mailbox or end up in the quarantine. But I do find that a little better than actually having something that might get through that would be click, which potentially could happen to standard protection. Now, with the standard protection and the strict policies, you also have the capability of delivering them to different people in your organization. So maybe you say, hey, I only want to have I want to have the standard protection going out to the majority of my staff, but the people in my C-suite and VPs, I want to have the strict protection. Why? Well, maybe their name is up on our website. Now, if you have people's names up on the website with pictures, their names and email addresses, those are harvested by malicious actors because they can now spoof that person and they can take information about that person, actually put it into email content and send things along. So those people are more likely to get spoofed themselves or have their name utilized to spoof others. So definitely wanna make sure those people are set up in more of a stricter content, stricter policies. Let's go ahead and take a look at the policies itself. So I'm gonna click on the anti-spam. There's the strict one in here and the, anti, the default one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a test. Test. I'm going to apply it to all. And then once I get through that, who am I applying to? Then I can say, hey, what do we want to do? We want to apply the phishing protection. We want to enable it for all the users, enable it for all our domains. And then we're going to go ahead and enable mailbox intelligence, enable intelligence impersonation protection, and spoof protection. Boom, with a couple clips of the button, I have now enhanced the security features of my organizations as easy as that and apply it to all the users I want. There's other features in here we can take advantage of, anti-spam. Again, this gets into more of the, you know, I got to test one right here. This gets more into the content coming through, going so, okay, hey, take a look to see if there's, increase the score if the IP address is uh, included in the URL. So, hey, if the person's using, instead of going to www.com and putting that into the URL, they're using a numerical value, which is basically how the internet knows how to route things. Typically things sent on the numerical value are gonna be sent you to a malicious site. So it's gonna block that immediately. And you can take a look at, hey, if it's an empty message, anything with HTML that might look weird, um, go ahead and say any uh, contain specific language, um, go into those certain levels sent from out of these countries. So you can block on countries and block those immediately right there. Next we have those. Next, we have your anti-malware, safe attachments, and safe links. Um, again, with these things, again, you can apply them to specific users or everybody as well. So with the attachment policies here, anti-malware, oh, you can block certain types of files. Again, this is typical in all anti-spam solutions. You can reject files that are dot .bat, which can be a potential um, way to people click on it and run a program behind the scenes and install malware content on a computer. Then we can do zero hour purge and go ahead and set that up. So hey, if something does get find that's malicious, pull it right out of your system. And then what I liked about here, which is included in all these things, is where is it going to go? Once things say a message comes through that is a dot that has a dot bad attachment, and where does it go afterwards? We can send it to multiple different things. We can send it to the quarantine and have it be available for only administrators to release, or, hey, we want to have the users be able to release something like that and release it back. So we'll get a quarantine message and then go with quarantine message daily, be able to release that message there. We have also tenant allow block lists. We can go in here for demo purposes. I can say, hey, I can block my TH Brown 11. We have URL protection. I do a little bit of a demo here in a second for end users, kind of showing you what happens with URLs. I went and say, hey, in Tiva uh, Tiva, anything with Tiva.com will be flagged as a malicious site and go ahead and pop it through there, kind of giving you an example of what it looks like when URLs are added to it. So there's multiple different ways we can configure this with us uh, within the 365 admin portal with also nice preset options for clients and going, hey, we want a standard or strict settings. So now you've seen the admin portal. Let me jump over to my user settings. All right. Okay, so here's my demo one account. And let's go ahead and send some emails to this. So uh, let's go demo one. First, test hello. Hi, everyone. Send just a regular message. Let's go ahead and do a demo one. 
check this out www.google.com, which should be a valid site. Save that. And demo one. Check it out to www.eva.com. Send this. And let's go ahead and create another example. Let's go ahead and do a Excel attachment where they www.mtiva.com in as well. And send this over. Now, this one will take a little bit longer because it's going to go through a sandboxing first to make sure that is nothing malicious in the file itself, but it should get through here once it passes through that content, uh, the end of spam checks in about a minute. So let me pass this across. Demo one. And send. All right. So I heard a whole bunch of dings. That means that I got some messages coming through. So let's take a look. So I, of course, got this hello test. Um, nothing malicious behind this. So it came in as usual. Now, check this out. So this should be my www.google.com. I click on this. It should open the link. No problem. You didn't even see any hesitancy when actually opening up that message. Um, let's see if I can see it real quick. Didn't pop. It's hard to see pop up, but it will actually see here. When it comes through in the www in Tiva, boom, this popped up in Tiva.com. Anyone about, I'll go out there, you'll definitely get to a website. Because I deem this a malicious site, it instantly came up coming a uh, into a selection saying, hey, this is malicious. You should not be able to access this. And I can click on it again, see if it comes up. Now, it happened too quick. Sometimes you can actually see where actually coming through is seeing going to safe links. And it won't actually pop up for a second pop over there. Now, the neat thing here again is I have sent other messages prior to this, just testing things out. Come over to my test in tiva.com as well. So this was sent a little bit ago and click on this again. It'll pop up. Same thing. It's checking it continues to make sure nothing is malicious behind the scenes. Let's see if I have received my message yet. I have not. I can come into this one I have here with a document. Again, I have my document here. It was sent what, this weekend. Um, and this was actually before I actually configured this as well. So I got my www.intiva.com. So I'm going to click on this. Again, pops up slightly different URL because it's doing it through your office protection within uh, SharePoint OneDrive. But it's still telling you that, hey, you cannot load this because this is a deemed malicious site. So regardless of the fact that I'm opening up through a link within a program or in Office 365, it checks to make sure that it is an incorrect document and not allow me to open it. I heard one more ding. That means my messages came through after it went through the whole sandboxing procedure. So let's see here. Should be the same thing. Got my document here. Now this is an Excel test. Take a look. All right, here it comes through. There's my link right there, and boom, pops up. I'm unable to access it. So you can kind of see this again, a small example, but again, this is happening continuously behind the scenes. Imagine how many links you're getting continuously when, and if they're only being checked at the instant they're going through the spam system, you have a open hole to your security profile because at any moment in time, those links can then be armed and then dangerous to your organization. So if a message comes through as well, you have the opt and gets quarantined. There's ways for end users to check it. So now that these come through, every day I'll be able to go to my quarantine message and you'll get an email on a daily basis telling everything has been quarantined. Um, protection. Microsoft. And we'll have you go to this link. Security, sorry, security. Dot Microsoft. Now, this is the quarantine for end users. Um, so the quarantine for end uh, users, again, you'll get a daily digest of this. And actually, that's about to change. And I'll show you that in a second. So I can click on review here and review my quarantine messages that have come through. And this will pop. Take a second. You can see I've done some testing in here. And one's actually gone to my quarantine. You can see here, I put one that had anything flagged again from TH Brown 11 at Yahoo was supposed to be quarantined immediately. So I sent this right before this uh, webinar. You can see here at 11.30, it ends up in my quarantine. So I actually say, hey, I was supposed to hear from this Ted Brown guy at, uh, you know, at 11.30. This is a valid message. I do have the ability to release this and have it sent to 
my system. So I can hit release and it will send back to my system. So that's a way for end users to interact with a quarantine. Very easy. You can send a report. You can actually use some filters about when things have come through. I just heard a ding. So that means that it actually got instantly sent back to my message in my email box. Click here. There you go. Um, hello, future lunch and learners. So this is basically came through almost instantaneously. You also have the capability as an end user to then flag people as block as well. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and click on this right here and say block. So I can say block sender for Ted Brown and hit block sender. And that will say every future message from Ted Brown will be sent to my junk email. So I can click OK. And now when I send new emails to demo, uh, demo one, it will end up in my junk email box right here. So it gives people the end user to have control as well as kind of see things in the junk mailbox, but also have full control of the quarantine. Very easy to use and simple. Uh, and simple. Now, one thing that I like to show here, because there has been a, definitely when I've talked to other companies about Microsoft 365, the one thing they did not like compared to other spam solution was the daily digest. People like getting the quarantine report, you know, multiple times throughout the day. And if you're getting it just once, you know, hey, I might feel that I'm missing something that might be important. I want to keep continuously check it. You always have the capability of going through and checking the fact that you have a quarantine in the uh, online version of quarantine. But people like to kind of get the email to kind of have them top of mind and check it out. So with Office 365, one again, the advantage I like about it is all the roadmap capabilities they have there today. So they're constantly improving the solution as are other organizations of their product. But I'm definitely seeing a, um, a lot of traction and a lot more things rolled out here than in other solutions. So just in Q1 alone and Q2 alone, you can see all the different improvements in here that Microsoft has put out for the roadmap and the Q2 and Q3 Q and Q4 are even more than this. The one thing I like to highlight in this one is again, here they are. They listen to people of saying, hey, people are not happy with just getting the one-time daily digest. And about two weeks from now, Microsoft Defender is going to launch the option to have hourly options for notifications for uh, your organization to receive quarantine messages. So then you can really define, hey, they want to receive it a couple times a day. Maybe they want to receive it three times a day. So you can kind of get really granular on how this information is sent to your end users. And there's other things in here that might not be as important for such as tag support groups, um, then email response through graph API. So being able to take um, other solutions and tie into um, the anti-spam solutions to make sure you have um, all, um, having response happen if a security breach occurred, your allow block lists. And so there's more functionality they're always throwing into the system and making it more robust. And that's all I have for today. That's pretty much gives the complete uh, kind of showing you the sophistication of where the Microsoft 365 um, Defender has, uh, where it was and where it is now. Uh, the ability for it to be more robust than the solution you have today because it will cover more options than just your email. It will cover almost everything you have going on in your Office 365 suite, your OneDrive, your SharePoint, your Teams, all still need protected, even though they aren't the main uh, in, uh, the main level of where you get all your communications from. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and take a look at the Q&A right now, and we'll go from there.